Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live at AWS reInvent 2022 in the MongoDB experience. And we, it is rocking, as you can hear. It's early morning, but and people are actually awake here in Las Vegas. Yeah, I always give them a lot of credit. They, they get up, they get out of bed. I mean, it doesn't really matter what time of day or night it is here, it's always daytime. And they don't <laughs> let us out of the casinos for this, just that reason, but AWS reInvent, always a rocking event. Very excited to be here in that MongoDB experience. People having breakfast, drinking coffee, and talking about data. No, I know, it's great, and, and data, as, as we've talked this entire week, is a huge enabler and a huge game changer to the enterprises who know how to, to deal with that hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, huge topics here. And that, why don't we introduce our guest here? Absolutely, Andrew Davidson, how are you? Welcome to the show. Great to be here, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm Andrew Davidson, SVP of uh, products at MongoDB, and uh, love being back in Vegas. You know, I've, I've had my coffees. <laughs> I needed my coffee in the room to get out of the room, and now I'm getting more down here with you guys. So. Absolutely, when we're done, we'll have one more. But, there you go, uh, there you, go. you know, enjoy the opportunity to sit down here. We know it's a fast-paced event. Absolutely. Let's start off kind of in the macros, kind of what's going on in the developer space, the demand around data, the need for, uh, you know, your, your services, MongoDB, and maybe even just a little bit quick backgrounder on MongoDB itself. Yeah, before I dive into MongoDB, I think it's, it's almost useful to demystify this broader topic of data. People talk about data being the new oil. Everyone kind of has this intuitive understanding of, hey, I can answer questions from data, that's got to be valuable. But there's something more to this data ecosystem that kind of gets lost. It's kind of this magical hidden layer, and it's what we call operational, operational data. You can think of operational data as almost the lubricant of the digital economy. It's, right. it's what enables all these software layers and these business, businesses to interact in real time. So you think about like, if I'm buying tickets to fly to Vegas, all of us doing that at the same time, tens of thousands of people. I'm on some flight search engine, I'm seeing results in real time, I'm seeing you know, which prices exist, which tickets are available, how many seats are left. Yeah. To enable all that, there's all these layers of software that make that possible. And each of those layers of software, the ticketing engine, the search engine, the you know, the airline, they all have their own software with operational data in the mix. And sometimes we call this operational data transactional data. That's where MongoDB sweet spot is. That's where we enable this shift to the software, the digital economy, in all these kinds of companies that exist, all on top of each other, kind of hidden away. But I like to demystify that because it isn't the same as answering questions from data, though that's also part two. That's important as well downstream. Yeah, and in fact, that type of data you have to treat differently, because essentially uh, the antithesis of the operational data is, is data that might make the experience better in a way downstream, but uh, if you don't get the operational data right, your business has stopped. That's exactly right. Think about it. If I'm, a, if I'm an executive, a CTO today, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to make sure that my business can respond to threats, take yeah. advantage of new opportunities. That means that I have to be operating as a software company, bringing in elite architects and software engineers, and retaining them and making them productive. And to do that, I have to structure myself in a way where I'm building software. I can't just buy that off the shelf anymore. And if you look at where these developers spend most of their time, these software engineers, it's, it's really wrestling with this data problem. This is the part of the, the stack that's going back decades now. It's, it's been slow moving and tough to deal with. MongoDB comes in with this new approach, an elegant modern model that enables those software engineers to just feel natural. And MongoDB gives this super set of workloads behind the scenes to drive the vast majority of the application's needs for the vast majority of applications. So that standardization that comes about for this operational data layer, it's a game changer for people. It is important. So we're here at AWS reInvent. Obviously, there are things going on between MongoDB oh, yeah. uh, and AWS. Uh, you brought out Atlas, big, big play there. Can you talk a little bit about what the, 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 where the relationship is, maybe a little bit about Atlas and what customers, how they're optimizing and using it for, for their benefit? Totally, totally, yeah. So MongoDB Atlas is our global database service on AWS. We conceptualize it as a developer data platform. And you know, if you think about our relationship with AWS, it goes back to the very beginning. Okay. In that origin moment of AWS, when, when IaaS- Very unique, by the way. Very not, unique. Not, be, not many, we've talked with a lot of partners who literally just started working with AWS in the last two years. No, it's amazing, because in that origin moment of IaaS, when, when yeah. we used to think about it as, I oh, remember when Google and Amazon started to realize, hey, commodity hardware, I can change everything. Yeah. And Amazon just pioneered this game-changing industry of, selling that commodity hardware as a service. In that moment. 15 years ago, by the way. In that moment, 
a bunch of virtual machines weren't going to be that useful if you yeah. didn't have software that could give it a distributed system that made it relevant for building modern software. That's yeah. where MongoDB comes in, this, this elegant model, this distributed system that basically allows developers to build incredible game-changing apps. Then you see the rise of the mobile revolution, levels of scale never before seen possible. And MongoDB just rode that wave on AWS, but as our customers demanded more from us, more mission criticality, right. transactional capabilities that go deeper and deeper, richer global and you know, geospatial capabilities to ride that mobile wave, eventually we realized we got to go up a level of abstraction. Nobody wants to be managing virtual machines and all this kind of low level plumbing well, especially anymore. Especially when all the infrastructure is all over the place. Totally. Data, uh, your own data center, colo, on the edge, and like you said, even now on mobile devices, when you're looking at containers, it's, it's everywhere, totally. and there's so many different public clouds out there, too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's interesting what you said, too, about um, you know, the layers of abstraction. We, you know, we've been talking to AWS folks about things like their container services, and how you've got all the levels of totally doing it yourself yeah. to wanting that entire app runner experience, and, and it sounds like with what you're doing, you're really kind of saying, hey, if you want to focus on developing, you want a platform that you can focus on building the best apps possible, this is where Atlas You're hitting really the nail on the head. Yeah, MongoDB Atlas says, hey, instead of me having to think about all this plumbing, I should have a truly declarative model where I just say, I want this database cluster anywhere in the world, over 100 regions, all three cloud providers, of course, AWS is where we've been the, you know, the, the longest and it's the center of so much gravity, you can build so many great things on it. And so to be able to just have that developer data platform give you the back end of your apps, you can use those with Lambda and AppRunner and all the great AWS application tier services, services that specialize in stateless applications that interact with the stateful layer, the data portion in MongoDB Atlas. It's, it's two peas in a pot. So talk about data, de sorry, data developer platform. Developer you know, data you platform, You keep yeah. saying it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, why are you guys leaning in so hard on that? Sure, so if you think about going back to that CTO, right, they're, they're bringing in these elite architecture software engineers to build those truly transformational parts of their business. Let's think about some examples. You know, I mentioned the, the airline ticketing before. That has to be an amazing experience. If I'm using Expedia, it needs to be just right in my face, everything I need, and it's so competitive. Building that customer competitive experience, making it the best experience possible, that requires you to focus on the customer, not on the plumbing. So having this, this layer that allows the developer to move super fast and operate with agility so that they can focus on all this white space that gets opened up, product experience, developer experience, the features in the application, it's a game changer. So many other kinds of customers build on this platform. Epic Games, building the back end of Fortnite, the most popular game in the world. Companies like Canva, you know, disrupting the graphic design ecosystem and an amazing SaaS experience. And the unsung heroes of the pandemic, government, cus yeah. co government customers who recognize the need to modernize. I think about the UK government Department of Work and Pensions who had chosen to modernize and move to this model of ag agile modern development teams. They did that before the pandemic, perfectly timed on MongoDB Atlas to enable 1.2 million claims to be processed every day, keeping the lifeblood of the economy moving through that tough time. Andrew, I love your ability to go very customer centric, talking about the true business benefits all the way down into the guts of, uh, of the tech. And I think that's important. I think it's one of the characteristics we've seen of truly successful technology companies. What I'd love to do now is maybe uh, do the double click on two of one of the most impactful trends out there today, and that's hybrid and, and multi-cloud. So, uh, first off, I can't even believe now there was a debate on whether the future was. By the way, check my white papers 10 years ago. We called it, okay? It's going to be, I was, you know, we were called cloud deniers, but it's like, no, no, no. This is not the way it's going to work. And here we are in multi-cloud, but everybody agrees, including AWS, the world is going to be hybrid. Now, the, the entire industry, there's a little bit of question on how we're going to get to multi-cloud, but the fact is, I have yet to talk to a Fortune 1000 CIO who doesn't have multiple public clouds. So it's here, it's just not very efficient. How is MongoDB optimizing the experience for its customers on both hybrid and multi-cloud? That's a great question. You know, <clears throat> I think MongoDB is truly unique in this space because folks have been able to, before they went to the public cloud, take advantage of what MongoDB brought to bear in the on-prem context, which yeah. was scratching a lot of that same itch, giving those software engineers the ability to move fast, be agile, be cloud ready, 
and to be able to shift into the public cloud in almost a migrationless way. Imagine yeah. not having to rewrite your application in any way once you're ready to move in. We can synchronize that data straight up to MongoDB Atlas the second they're ready. So what I've, I've seen is it doesn't really matter when your cloud journey is going to begin. Obviously now we see tens of thousands of people here, everyone's doing it. Right. But pockets and, and critical use cases staying close to systems record in the mainframe even, those are all modernizing on-prem, that's okay. But they're all going to be cloud ready if they start on MongoDB in that, in that migrationless model. And, then once they're in the public cloud, yeah. with MongoDB Atlas, they can truly pick and choose from the best cloud provider for their needs. Okay, and, you so know, just yeah. a clarifying question. Yeah. Regardless of the platform, and I saw what you did uh, with IBM, in, incredible work, whether it's on-prem, mainframe, uh, x86 server, ARM server, whether it's um, singular experience for the developer, whether it's public cloud or on-prem. Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears> it's, it's truly a game changer to be able to you know, lean into creating a modern standard. Yeah. Think about it. For decades, folks have thought about tables, data through this lens of tables, this kind of model that feels like a big spreadsheet. We all get that, but that model is not how developers think and code today. That's yeah. not how you bring in those elite software architects. So, if you want to be able to upgrade that mindset, how do you convince, how do you light this fire and get millions of developers around the world to care about it? That's where we have to focus. How do we enable all these folks, whether they've been in the industry for decades, or they're that next generation of developer just coming in, you know, in academia today, how do you, you know, invest in making millions of them able to understand it? So, you have to be everywhere. You have to be in every platform, and you have to be investing in, you know, broad-based, best-in-class documentation, our MongoDB University platform. Right. Literally, it's like an online MOOC, you know, massively online course for <laughs> MongoDB. We got hundreds of thousands of people signing up for that every month and MongoDB Atlas gets 150,000 signups every single month, people all over the world. So it just shows that you can feel this kind of movement as this cha the change happens. So, we only have a few minutes left, but I, I am curious. Yeah. It's not, you know, nothing is as easy as, you know, we're great, we're analysts at telling the story of, hey, everything, everything to the cloud, yeah. easy, you know, the easy button, and, yeah. and you're yeah. making it, and obviously these clients are buying in, they're working with you, they're saying, hey, we see it, we get it, but what are kind of the challenges or those that have been building with Mongo for say a long time sure. on-prem, moving to the cloud? Has it been fairly easy to overcome because of the, the, this transitional technology that you're building or are they still running into challenges and how are you overcoming That's that? That's a great question. Let's be honest, nothing's easy. That's right. why you need these elite software architects and software engineers to build what really makes you a software company and everyone's struggling with this challenge, but I would sort of juxtapose it against the alternative model is one in which, and what we've seen people over the decades do is, they'll have to layer in a different engine, a different system for every little part of their software. And this leads to a massive sprawl of complexity and governance dead and different interfaces and every app, every environment, it's totally different. What we've seen is with this, this idea of a developer data platform that can do the vast majority of the needs for the vast majority of your applications. What that means is if you take a big step back, you're a CTO of a global enterprise, I'm going to have hundreds of different teams, two pizza teams probably, right? Each operating with their own agility. But if I can have all of them operate on a standardized model, rather than each of them doing this crazy chaos that I'm going to be super worried about in a couple of years when I realize I can't govern this anymore. If all of those hundreds of two pizza teams are operating on a modern developer data platform and taking advantage of their own customization to allow themselves to move fast, not saying everyone needs to be just shackled, but allowing everyone to, you know, to do their own thing with standardization, that's the, that's the need of the moment. We're seeing that trend in partnership with AWS left and right, all the focus they're putting into governance, we're, we're right there front and center in that shift. That's good. So, Andrew, it's been a great conversation, uh, and I can't believe how much we got accomplished <laughs> in, 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 in the booth here. I but know. But the great news, we're all fast talkers, and we actually know what we're talking about. That's right. And you put those combinations together, and it, it ends up working. So I just want to thank you for coming on the 6.5 this is your first time on the show? First I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, this oh, is great. Great, great to be, here with be the you guys. Guys. No, we'd love to have you on again. Re really appreciate Look the time. Look forward to it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, let's grab a let's go grab a coffee at the, the bar behind let's us. Let's here. do it. Cool. Let's do it. All right, everybody out there, thank you so much for tuning in to this 6.5 in the booth at the experience here at AWS reInvent 2022 for MongoDB. We appreciate you tuning in. Check out all the videos that Patrick and I did here at AWS reInvent 2022. Great show, great event. Hit that subscribe button, but we got to go. We're out of here. See you Thank later. Thank you so much.